Uh, just before the park closed, and instead of leaving the, the it shut, she did. There was some money raised. There was some um, basically some sponsorships that was brought up where the names were put on the carousel horses. They brought back the hands of the carousel horses they could. They had them donated back to them, and then they leased some off the American. I'm uh, sorry, the New England Carousel Museum down in Bristol, Connecticut and filled in the menagerie. And everybody who donated money to help them do that got their name on a little like plaque on the side of the horse or on the floor by the horse. So that's probably what you're, that's probably what you're thinking about. Well, could be. I thought yeah. she was trying to. Yeah, the yeah. original part did the, the carousel brought it back. They sold everything off for the money. Mm -hmm. um, but they wanted to keep the original mechanism up and running. Um, so what they did, they basically opened that back up. And then when the park closed, everything went back to original owners. But shortly after, Allison Bowen, that was also in the news, uh, was trying to sell the whales. In fact, most of us on the group at some point bought whales. I bought more than one. Uh, to try to raise money for it to run the park. When they didn't meet the threshold that they wanted, um, the whale money was basically returned. Uh, the next option was trying to get uh, part of the property bought, and some of these developed for something else, some of these developed for amusement. Um, that was the gentleman that bought the train and the um, kitty ride. So it's one of the small amusement sections with like shops and stuff. So that kind of fell apart because there was too much back and forth of what was going to happen with the property, and, you know, who owned it and who owned what and how it was going to work. Uh, then there was an even domain. <laughs> Um, option. A lot of people were pushing for the town to buy it. Uh, it made it operate as a town park with the amusement. So you'd go back to the free entry, you could just go in, walk around, pay for a ride, or buy a van and ride it if you want, uh, which is actually the similar format to how Playland Park was operated down in Wine, New York. Uh, that ended up falling apart because some of the, um, you know, I'll say big leagues at the time really wanted to see housing develop because the tax revenue off the housing was much better than they would have gotten off of a park, especially if they bought the park, they'd have no tax revenue. It would be money out with varying money in. Uh, so they didn't really like that idea. That all fell apart. Uh, we were actually trying to see as a group, we were in our infancy at the time, um, around the time all this happened. And we had actually tried to see if there was any opportunity to buy the park because there was a sale value at the time. Uh, we were actually down in Florida at, at the International Association of Music Parks and Attractions talking to banks and what is what information we need and what else we need to maybe find a property at the time. And then all of a sudden this news comes up saying that it was a curse. <laughs> and it could become common. The one plus side of that particular sale is that gentleman was fantastic. He stayed in touch with us. He's the one that actually made sure that we got the coaster cars that we got, the bouncer car that we got. He put us into the warehouse, so we got um, we got ring toss bottles. All, all, when we do go to events and the kids get to play ring toss, they're playing on ring toss bottles that we saved from the property. The kids are actually playing <laughs> with a ring toss on original ring toss bottles that we um, So we were, he was really good about making sure we got some stuff. He got some size, and I believe the historical society got enough stuff too. So he's really good about trying to make sure that whatever could be saved, God saved, and not just scrap. Uh, so we appreciate him for that. And then, it just, I guess just recently got sold to a new owner. And, you know, they actually, the biggest thing that the whole place was sold, and I believe now it's called Alive in the Room, mm -hmm. <laughs> the um, animal place management uh, called us and said that we don't know what they're going to do with our realm collection and stuff, so we're giving it to you. So that's all of the stuff here and here. Um, that we brought with us, that, and uh, we have two giant, uh, one giant sign, which is the original um, historic, historic history museum sign, and the museum was at the park. And we got a, uh, a, a photo about this size that, that uh, was of the, the 1899 uh, uh, water slide, crazy water slide that everybody got gassed over. And so we, we got a picture of that, so I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we couldn't, you know, bring here today, but this is a sampling all of that. I don't know how anybody anybody feels about a little a little tiny gazebo with a handful of postcards on it. So that's one of the reasons why we got involved with this because there's no. In our 
opinion, that doesn't that doesn't define what it was. If anybody was to drive over here and have a slice of pizza and look at that, it wouldn't be <laughs> what we know of it. The is it that little yeah. Um, the um, developers. I'm not sure if it's the second developer or the first developer, but that was in the design to build it. And believe that the um, association is supposed to take care of it, but we don't even know if that is the case. Well, the demand that goes down and washes stuff and makes it just a neighbor. So that's why, that's why I was wondering. Well, there's, no, there's no one that actually, is here that, that I know of. I mean, you, I mean, it's just a neighbor, obviously, but I don't think it, there's no organization, there's no um, anybody with, with, with the development that does it. And when Emerald Place was sold off, their entire management team and everybody went with it. So I paired them with all new people, new stuff. And we got sad that they sold it, but positive that we got the stuff. And where was all of that in Emerald Place? Uh, this was in, um, there was a gentleman who worked at the, at the park in the camp table when the park closed. Was Bill Murphy. He was basically the caretaker, and then he was the last, really, really last person that actually worked in the park. And he was the first person that actually worked as maintenance for the condo development. And he had a, a, a unit in the uh, uh, development, and he had a lot of stuff in his, his basement. Um, what had happened was there was a fire, and um, they had since left. He sadly passed away. Some of that collection was put, in, put into the actual uh, office area, and then over time was, was donated to us. In fact, the case here is some of his uh, Bill Murphy stuff, and there's a couple pictures of him in there. That, was, that whole case would be on the wall as you walk in the room. And yeah, that, that photo up there. Yep. What's your plans or on the future? Like you're gonna go no no Wyndham Park or? Yeah. So the new Wyndham Cooperative's long term goal is, as you know, we have an ever growing museum. We're getting, we're getting more things through donations, through purchases. And Kim will tell you a little bit more about that. Okay. So as anyone knows, <clears throat> it takes a process to start anything now because we're not starting with the blueprint. We're starting completely from scratch, which means it's either going to be just flat land or already pre-owned buildings. So, and we also can't start off today because, you know, never mind with the pandemic that just happened, but everything is more expensive now and we're basically still trying to build our foundation from the ground up. Um, so what our plan was is that we have a five-year plan. So starting from this year, now that the, we're trying to get back out there, we're starting to do our um, yes. events again. We have donations that we're accepting, with whether it's uh, money donations or other memorabilia you want to donate. We also are looking for different crowdfundings to help us at least get the start of our building to build that foundation and build up from there. So within the next five years, based on our business plan, because our business plan is actually halfway done, which we can actually present to other organizations to help us see if we can get funding through them, like the small business and the uh, small business uh, place and uh, the, the chamber, yeah, the chamber of commerce. We can always present the business plan to them and to see if we can get funding started. But then the next five years, we're hoping to break ground where we can at least start off, whether it's just a museum or if we can start off even more where it's a museum and arcade with maybe one or two rides. But you always have to start somewhere. And starting from the smallest area, just to bring back that sense of nausea, nausea, nostalgia. 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 Yeah. I'm nausea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Only for the roller coaster. Only for the roller coaster. Um, nostalgic feeling is to draw people in and to basically give people the sense of this is what I did, but now I can take the next generation of individuals and show them exactly the experience that I had when I was. At least that's what I want to do because I mean I was eight when Willow Park closed. I only had eight years of fun. 
that's way too short money. I wanted, I wanted 30 years of funds, and that's all I own them now, 30, and, um, and now they took it away from me. And now with the sad things of, like, the goal in America is gone. Yep. Um, if you've ever noticed, gone. a lot over the years we have lost a lot of our amusement areas in here. Um, God, I think it was, what, around 2010 we lost uh, the Tri-Town drive-in. Um, Whale Park also had a drive-in that um, I have shared um, on our Facebook page that was open. I, I like the comment about I'm car hopping from one drive-in to another. Members of the Facebook page or Whale Park uh, Memories page? Uh, Whale Park page? Yeah, so we posted a lot of stuff on there. Walker page, and that's all us. So they also had a drive-in drive that was not that was closed too, and then we just lost for all in America. I mean, we are getting other places, but it's always nice to bring back something that happened, just to give it new life. We, we, we feel that the amount of history that the park had, that should be shown and spread to future generations. Yeah, it shouldn't be, you know, packed up in a case and thrown up into someone's house. Yeah, so it's like it's always great to remember we, the past. We've had people who. Um, who have decided to like clean out their attic or their basement or their closet and they come across sort of their mementos from, from Wayland. And then the first thing they want to do is talk to the kids to see if they want them and the kids don't want it. So they just said, well, we don't want to throw it out because it meant a lot to us. So they end up contacting us and they can get it for us. And we take it and preserve it. So like I said, it's not an easy process. And there has been, I think we have been in operating now because I joined about oh, four years ago, and uh, they have been working on this since the day that Wayland was. And I'm not gonna lie, there's been a lot of bumps, there's been a lot of setbacks. It's never easy. 2019 was supposed to be our best year. We had our best year, and then we thought 2020 was gonna be even better, where we were actually gonna get something done. And something happened uh, called the pandemic, <laughs> COVID-19, and everybody took a nose down. So, so now we're it's like we almost had to do the reset button and start up again. But now that we're back on our feet and we're trying to really hard now to get more active, we're hoping that in the future weeks to months, um, where we start going to other events or if we start posting online or even reaching out through flyers posted around the local area, we're hoping to get businesses and individuals involved to help us so that together, just like Mike understood with the cooperative, everyone has a say in what we do. So then we're asking the public to then get together so that we can all have a say in how this goes. Community owned and operated. Yeah. Um, has any of the other amusement parks that closed the similar thing kind of rejuvenated? Uh, yes, to a point. Um, there's actually signs around uh, Rocky Point Park, because that's now City Park, uh, Benson, which was new in the Lane World for a couple of years. Uh, the entire property is owned by uh, the town. Uh, you can actually walk into the Gorilla Cave, there's little plaques everywhere. So you're like, oh, there used to be alligators here, and there used to be flamingos over here, and you know, these were the rides. You know, look over here, this used to be where the train station was. And, they actually still have the original train station building. Uh, they have a small display of artifacts in the old um, elephant barn. Uh, so they've done that. There's a small museum at Ride Playland, which is still operating. They have a small museum with some of their old ride pieces. Um, some of existing parks, like Kenobles, operates a museum and a carousel museum uh, off of memorabilia from things they've taken out and told you about their timeline. Uh, the, the Adora Park, no, not the Adora Park. They stand there. The Adora Park. Adora Park. Adora Park. Adora Park. Adora Park. From uh, Youngstown, uh, Ohio. Uh, they had a park similar to a well once. And this husband and wife team, or well, husband and then the business wife, put it that way, uh, started to buy fine pieces and basically the same, um, the same kind of idea of us. They started to build a collection. They have a garage on their property uh, where they house all the home and all these pieces, some bride pieces and things, and they have the, what they call the, the Adora Park Experience, where they bring people in four times a year and basically go, go through them. They, they, uh, they have a 
small arcade with it. They, they've written books on, the, on the experience, and uh, they still expand the collection. And mentioning the arcade, one of the items we do have is one of our member owners, become a member owner, uh, donated his ski ball machine, the 1968 ski ball machine from Wayland Park, uh, to the group, which is actually in the process of being rehabbed. So when we do have something up and running that people can come to, the ski ball is going to be up, uh, basically up and running as an interactive museum piece. And one neat thing about that particular ski ball is it's old enough that it actually works off both dimes and quarters. Uh, so if you played off a dime, you'd get paid out one, but if you used a quarter, it paid out three. Uh, for whatever score you got. That's <laughs> uh, so not going to be the first thing we have. Yes? You know, I went to a lecture at the college many years ago, one in the history. Yep. I'm sure you have that. Yes. Because that really saddened me. Yep. To see where it was and what it became. Oh, this is the one about eight years ago? No, more than that. Okay, we did one about eight years ago or so. Well, this college. was one of the students. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. That did it for one of his, for one of his classes. Yes. Oh, you mean oh, the documentary? Uh, yeah. Yes, that, that gentleman, yes. Oh. Yeah, he did yeah, really he, yeah. he really brought you into it. Yeah. And if you notice that our presentation didn't have any of the, you know, the stripping or the destruction or any of that, that, that those pieces. Because we feel that that's not the message we want to send here. Everybody knows what happened to it. We don't need to keep showing people what happened to it. Willem should be seen as more of a in transition as opposed to closed. And that's the way we want to see it. Is that there's enough there and enough history and enough memories and fun involved that it can just eventually rise back up like a phoenix somewhere. Or think of it as a going out of its one phase and into another phase. Okay. Any other questions? I do want to correct one thing. The uh, Pirate's Den, I, was, I, I kind of skipped on the manufacturer. Uh, the manufacturer of the ride mechanism is a ride called Pretzel. Sounds weird, I know it's a snack food, but that's the company that um, made that particular one. Uh, they actually still have a similar card mechanism operating in um, Nobles. And um, that type of mechanism is the base mechanism at Ride Play Life is on the castle, but they build custom cards for it. Uh, so I want to correct it and mention that it's a pretzel dark ride and I Alan Hershey. So anyone else have any questions about our group or the history of Will? Thanks for taking the call. Take cash and uh, take cash. Take cash card.